everyone. Welcome to Hat Chat with Rochelle. I'm so glad that you joined us today. We're going to have a great time learning about our friend and soon to be your friend, Kim Atsit. She's from the Kinder Gals, and we're going to jo have her join us in just a second. If it's your first time joining us for Hat Chat, Hat Chat is a live talk show every week on Thursdays. So make sure that you put it in your calendar to join us. And don't forget, share this broadcast with others. If you think there's some other teachers who would like to learn more about Kim Atzit and everything she does, share this broadcast. All right, let's get to know Kim Atzit. Here she comes. Hey. Hello. So nice to see you, Kim. You too. I We're love so your glasses. Those are so cute. Thank you. And I love your hat. Can you tell us anything about your hat? Okay. Well, first of all, there's everybody has their happy place. My happy place is the beach. So this is my beach hat because we have to protect our skin, of course, when we go. But there's a sure sign that you can tell that I'm from the South in this hat. Do you know what it is? How would you know that I was from the South just from looking at this hat? Monogram. That's right. <laughs> if you're a true Southern girl, everything has to have a monogram on it. Even your socks have to be monogrammed. Your shirts have to be monogrammed. Everything needs a monogram. I'm That's surprised what, you know that. I do know that. I hang out with a lot of Southern girls, and I love that about you all, that, yeah. that you put monograms on everything. So that yeah. is fabulous. I'm so glad that you're here with us. And yes, that is one thing that you can know about Kim is that she lives in the South. But there's a lot of other things we're going to find out today about her because I'm going to play some true and false with her in just a second. But I ask each one of my guests to tell us a joke and a joke that's appropriate for four-year-olds. And the reason why is we have a lot of people watching who are teachers of four-year-olds or five-year-olds. And also because I live with a four-year-old and I know they love to tell jokes, but my four-year-old needs some more jokes. So Kim, let's hear it. All right. So I, my nieces are in third and fifth grade. So I called them up and said, give me your best jokes. And then we tested them on, on a little munchkin who was four. And here's the one she picked for us to tell. Why did the banana go to the doctor? Why did the banana go to the doctor? Yes. He wasn't peeling very well. <laughs> he wasn't peeling very well. There you go, everybody. A four-year-old would think that was funny, right? That's right. But they are just learning how to do all that with language. And so it just makes sense that that would be funny yeah. to them. So for thank sure. you for sharing that. That is wonderful. Um, before we play the true and false, tell us a little bit, Kim, about what's going on in your life, things that are happening with you. Well, right now, the biggest thing going on is that I've uh, matched up, paired up with Dee Dee Wills and Adam Peterson. And powered by SDE, we're doing a conference called Teach It. And what I really love is this conference is designed by kindergarten teachers for kindergarten teachers. And the whole two days is just packed full of good kindergarten teaching. It's it's what we're trying to do there is we're trying to show people how to take the things that we did before we got so bogged down with standards and how to take that stuff that is um you know, brain power producing activities and connect them to the standards. So that's a lot of what we're showing is how to have that love of kindergarten, how to have true kindergarten and yet have a power packed day full of um, standards. So it's two full days with Dee Dee Wills and Adam Peterson. Now we have had some pre-K and some first grade teachers sneak in and they don't have to sneak. Everyone really is welcomed. We're just saying that this conference is designed specifically with the kindergarten teacher in mind. So in a couple of weeks, we'll be in Orlando. And then this summer, we're going to be in Nashville and in um, uh, San Antonio. Right, San Antonio. So if they want to, if y'all, the people want to know more, then they can just go to STE's website and click on Teach It, and that will take them to where all the registration and stuff is. Okay, let's see. We've got um, 
I was just looking to see if we've posted that link yet in the comments and we will do that so you can click right on it and find out more about the conference. Um, we've been before, ESGI has been there and we love it and the teachers get super excited. So we can't wait. And will you be wearing your teal Converse tennis shoes? That's right, that's right. And I will tell you that right now, if they sign up using, I know that they were given out a code for Florida, ESGI was. Do you remember oh, what that is? Well, yeah. let's look into that because it gets them some extra on ESGI and it gets them a, a discount on their registration. So it's just for just for the Florida. Right. One. So You're exactly right. And we'll post that down there too. Yeah. Kristen's working with us behind the scenes on our live chat, and she is going to be the one putting in all those links okay. for us. So look at that in the comments, and we'll make sure that you guys get all those. Yeah. So we want you to come. We want you to get a discount. We want you to love it, just like all the teachers who have attended have loved it. So it's that's so great. Fun. It's been we're, we're so glad, and what great partners to have with you as well. Right. Right. Oh, yes. They are a powerful duo. So it's a lot of fun. They both bring something so unique. You know, Adam's real big on play based learning and he and he understands how to. Um, I don't know, to, to just really tap in to that young kid and, and know the activities that they can learn best by. And Dee, Dee she's your master of that workshop model teaching there. I don't think there's anyone who has a better grasp on it than her. She really gets it. And so I love to hear her talk about writing. She's, she's the master. Great. And Kim, you have a lot of great presentations that you do as well. And one of the things that we love so much is the fact that you've created differentiated math tests in ESGI yeah. for us. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what teachers can find when they get bring your tests into their ESGI account for free? Yeah. So what happened is I have a teaching partner named Michelle and Michelle and I taught together for many years. And you know how when you teach with somebody and you just know, OK, that's my soulmate and your skill sets are different, but complement each other. Well, that's what that's what's going on with Michelle and me. And she and I have done a lot of work together, but we wrote some units together that are for your small group math time and each lesson, each one of the lessons um, Michelle's the master scripter, so she scripts the lesson plans and I create the games. But she has in the lesson plans, she shows how to differentiate this this um, activity to meet the needs of all your learners, which is very easy tweaks, not having to create whole new activities, but to make the activity itself open ended enough that just with a small tweak, you can differentiate for your kids. So I had just um, met our friend Melinda and she had seen my units. And so she asked me if I would write some assessments. So you can use these assessments for each of the units. So they're right there in ESGI. Now there is a paper copy too that's in my TPT store. If they, if sorry, if they want to have it in in the paper version and in the the digital version, they can get it that way. But um, yeah, right there. And so what will happen is after you you know do your unit and then you do your assessment, then you're going to get your um, your you're like, uh, you'll get the assessment, you'll get the data, and then you can use that data to form your remediation groups. They'll tell you how you need to group the kids. And so, so instead of waiting to the very end to assess, you might want to do a subtest of your, of your um, test, just pull out certain items, which I know we can do that through ESGI. And then you can reshuffle your groups based on where they are. So, you know, it's a win win because because it'll already shoot your groups out for you. That's to me is the biggest time saver. Yes, exactly. Teachers tell us that all the time. And, you know, Kim's talking about ESGI right now. And if you haven't tried ESGI yet, we're going to let you try ESGI and for an extended trial right now. If you start your ESGI free trial now with the promo code at it, you're going to get an extended trial until August 31st. We're calling that our spring fling and the spring fling. You can see right here, you've got some eggs for the border for the spring fling. Uh, if you start your trial now with code at it, you get it through August 31st. So now is the perfect time to start ESGI. And then you can add all of Kim's DI math 
tests in there and start using them right now with your class. You know, and even if they don't have the units that I wrote, those units are written to cover the, well, the, actually they were written when we had Common Core. So they cover all the Common Core standards, which in the kindergarten world, the standards are pretty much basically the same as what they were, what they are now. It's pretty much the same. So they can, even if they're not using those particular units, they can look at the title of the, of the, of the chapter test and they can use that test just without really, if they don't have the units. Yeah, good point. It's just they're just good test people and they're really beautiful. She's got some great graphics in there and you're going to really love them. So Kim also has a lot of great other ideas on her blog. And if you want to follow her blog, you can follow her blog there. And Kim, you uh, the one we're showing right now, it says work on it Wednesdays. Is that um, something well, you wanted that, to talk about? Yeah. So. You had said you were going to ask me about, you know, one of my favorite teacher tips. Yep. And so that blog post goes more into detail about my favorite teacher tip. I think when people like have heard me present a bunch of times, there's two things that kind of, you know, kind of match up with my name. One is I create instead of creating like table groups, I create what we call families. And each child is in a family with them. Um, they're a heterogeneous group with all abilities, all personalities, kids that they can work well with. But the other thing that people equate with me is the idea of what I call the carpet bag. Um, because I've used flexible seating, I don't know, I, I don't ever remember not having flexible seating in my room. It's, it's the way I learned to be a teacher. But because of that, my kids don't have assigned seats. Like they don't have a seat that's there. So having their supplies or having you know their books or whatever they need, at their seat is not going to work. So what I did was I took some bags and if they go to this blog post, it's got pictures of everything. But basically anything that we use on the rug for whole group teaching is in that bag. So in the morning, they just put that bag on the carpet and then they can pull um, like I can say, OK, get out this folder and I hold up which one I want them to get out. And then we're ready to go. No more passing out. No more collecting. No more of any of that kind of stuff. Um, it's just it just makes your your um, your carpet time run so much smoother, you know, because you're not having to say go get go find or pass things out. They already have them right there in that bag. But that blog post describes everything I keep in my carpet bag, how I organize it and manage it, what the kids do with it when we're not using them. And so that blog post gives more detail than we can do in a quick um, FaceTime. Oh, that's fabulous. When you said carpet bags, I didn't know exactly where you were going with it, but I'm glad that you explained that. Yeah. And I'm telling you what, when I was a teacher, that was my worst time of day was passing stuff out, you know, so I'm glad you did that. Now, you can follow Kim's blog here at the, um, Kindergals blogspot.com. So make sure you follow because she's got a lot of great tips for teachers of all grade levels. Now, I try to blog. I try to blog once a week now. Um, there was a whole month that I didn't get to blog because just like everybody else, things come up. You put your family first and you fit everything else in around that. But usually I try to blog once a week. Um, I just did a blog post on vocabulary. So that was yeah. kind of a fun one to do. So, um, yeah, just check them out. That's wonderful. I saw that one, too. I did read about vocabulary and that was really great. OK, now we're wrapping up. But. I told you I was going to tell you some things about Kim Atzid that I know because she's my friend and now she's going to be your friend because you're going to know a little bit more about her. And she might be a little nervous because I didn't run these past her. These are all things that I've <laughs> observed about Kim. So we're going to do a little true and false. OK. okay. All right. Ready, Kim? All right. Okay. Kim, do you have a classroom set up in your basement of your house? True okay. or false? So that's true. <laughs> so we finished the basement and um, just recently. And, um, you know, I've got two grandsons. Everybody that knows me knows that they are the light of my life. And so we wanted to build a playroom. So half of it is set up like a den. And then half of the half of the, the playroom area is set up like a like a small classroom with a library and a block center and a, a table workspace so that when I go down there, I can play school with my grandbabies. <laughs> <laughs> and it is great if you do you ever put pictures on your blog because well, 
I did put some on Facebook when we first started it, but I I did not. There's a few things I still want to do to finish it because I just kind of lost my steam in January. So it's not completely finished, but that will definitely be a blog post when I get that done. Uh, that's a deal. I will watch it. And those of us who don't have basements are jealous because we wish we could have a classroom in our basement. Yes. Okay. A true or false. Kim, that's it. Do you put up multiple Christmas trees at Christmas time? Okay, so yes, I put a tree in every room. I'm kind of like, I know there are lots of people that decorate for every holiday. I don't really do that. Like I don't put out, I have a few things I put out for like Easter or Thanksgiving, but not like decorate my whole house. But Christmas has always been a big deal in my family. And I have themed trees. So like I have a Santa tree, I have a snowman tree. I have a tree that's decorated with only white ornaments. Mm. I have a gingerbread tree and then I have a farmhouse tree. So, and, and there might be some, oh, a snowman tree. I don't know if I said that. I have a snowman tree. But, um, yeah, you know, you just collect ornaments over the years. I mean, I've been collecting ornaments for almost 40 years now. And you just end up with so many that um, you have to spread them out on some several different trees. <laughs> I love it. I can't wait to see them all up next year. You'll have to show us. Um, and last one, true or false, did you just take a cruise with your family? Well, not my family. My oh. Okay, so my best, one of my very best friends in the whole wide world, her name is Bert, and uh, she is a retired teacher. She just retired a year ago. So I was glad when some of my friends' schedule became a little bit more flexible like mine, because as you know, my schedule is real flexible. Some days, some weeks I work every day, some weeks I don't work any days. So um, she, her husband, and her have started cruising with me and Andy. And we just came back from a cruise down to the Caribbean um, two weeks ago. So mm -hmm. it's so much fun to, you know, to be able to cruise when everybody else is in school. <laughs> because It's a little quieter and a little calmer on that boat. You know, if you go on, if you go on a boat in the summer, your teacher voice tends to come out, you know, with all the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't have to correct anybody. You know, <laughs> yeah, I think we all still have that teacher voice, whether we're in the classroom anymore or not. So um, gosh, Kim, I've really enjoyed spending time with you today. Everybody make sure you find out more about the teach it conferences. You're really okay. going to want to go and hear all about it. And Kim, are there still, as do you know, if there's still registration available for the conferences that are coming up? There are, there is, there's still availability at the conferences. So we, we can enlarge the room to fit however many people want to come. So we have that flexibility. So we're not turning people away unless we reach maximum capacity. And I can't imagine that happening. Um, just because I know how many we can seat in that room. I mean, it could be a whole bunch of people. So Fabulous. the more the merrier, right? I mean, right. that's right. When we get together, the energy that teachers um, exude is just so contagious. So now, I conferences, really. Conferences are more than just learning new ideas. You know, it's, it's a time to get rejuvenated. It's a time to remember why you're a teacher. It gives you that shot in the arm. It also sometimes reminds you, you know, you're doing a lot of things right. You know, there are some things that we all need to work on, because if you stop learning, you you need to stop teaching. You know what I'm saying? So but I think sometimes teachers just feel like they don't do anything right, like everything they do is wrong. And so sometimes when you go to a conference, you say, hey, I'm doing that already. So sometimes it's good to hear things that you're doing already, things that you can do better and things that you've never heard of. You know, so I just think there's a lot of good things about a conference that, you know, with all those teachers in one room that you can that you can get more than even just the presentation from the presenter. Yeah, that's great. That's that's a great way to end, Kim, because really, that's just what it's all about. Right. We want to learn from each other. We want to inspire Absolutely. each other. And Absolutely. don't forget to go to Kim's blog to learn more tips, because we always want to share and share this broadcast, too. If you hear of somebody else that needs to be inspired. There's Kim Atzit, and she is your girl with her monogrammed hat. We're so right. glad that you right. can join us with Hat Chat You're today. You to pick out the Southern people when you go to the beach this summer. <laughs> I love it. It'll be great. Okay, Kim, take care. Everybody Bye. join us next week for more Hat Chat. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. -bye, Bye.